Hey everyone, welcome into Bracket Science. We have another quickie pod in store for you where we go through all the games this week along with previewing some of the big games tomorrow on this loaded Saturday slate. In just a quick maybe 10 to 20 minute uh, podcast slash video, whether you're listening to this on YouTube or Spotify, Apple or Google Podcasts. We had a lot of upsets this week and we have a huge slate of games tomorrow, particularly out of the Big East. Let's get right into it. We're going to start with Florida visiting number six, Tennessee, all the way back on Tuesday. Yes, we're going to talk about all of these games. Tennessee beat them by 19. Tennessee is number six in the nation, and Dalton Connect has been taking over as of late. Dalton Connect had over 30 points for the third straight game. He is the missing piece to Tennessee's offensive struggles. The last couple of years, he has come in and made an immediate impact. They blew out Tennessee by 19. Let's go through these quickly. Number two, Purdue visited Indiana in what was supposed to be a good game. Purdue blew them out 87-66. This Indiana team is so out of sorts right now. Xavier Johnson, back-to-back games with a technical for him. Big technicals. They're, they're very undisciplined. Khalil Ware did not show up in this game. Khalil Ware has shown up on a lot of draft boards recently. He's got the skill set. He's a big, tall, good shot blocker, can shoot the three. He's got what you'd expect, yet he was non-existent in this game against Zach Eady. Zach Eady and the Boilermakers take care of business fairly easily there. Moving on, also in the Big Ten, number 11, Wisconsin, visited Penn State, a below 500 Penn State, and Penn State beat them 87-83, moving Wisconsin to 5-1 and one in the Big Ten, just one game ahead of Purdue right now. On to the Big 12, number 19, uh, TCU visited Cincinnati in a game We've talked a lot about ranked teams losing to unranked teams on the road. Wisconsin lost to Penn State. TCU loses to Cincinnati, 81-77. Also a ranked team losing to an unranked team. Number nine, Baylor visited Kansas State, and Kansas State won 68-64 in overtime. Jerome Tang, the old assistant coach at Baylor, has now beaten Baylor three straight times, 3-0. He is 10-0 in overtime in his two years, an incredible stat. Jerome Tang, great coach, big win for Kansas State, trying to get off of the bubble watch. A battle of two ranked teams, also out of the Big 12. Number 24, Iowa State visited BYU, number 20 team in the nation. BYU beat them 87-272. BYU showing they belong in the Big 12. Out of the Mountain West, we've talked a lot about this conference. Number 16, Utah State visited New Mexico in the pit, one of the toughest places to play. New Mexico put up 99 and beat Utah State 99-286. Into the Big East, St. John's visited Seton Hall. Seton Hall absolutely rolling right now. St. John's was without Rick Pitino. He tested positive for COVID. Seton Hall won the game 80-65. They are atop the Big East, tied with defending champ and number one team in the nation, UConn. Good for Seton Hall. Kadari Richmond is incredible over there. Into the ACC. Georgia Tech visited Clemson and beat them 93-90 in overtime. Clemson, what is going on over there? We talk about how good they are. We told it, told people not to buy into uh, their ACC struggles and that they would be fine. They are not fine. They're 2-4 and four in the ACC and just lost to one of the bottom-tier teams in Georgia Tech, especially at home at Clemson. Tough loss for Clemson there. Into the SEC, Georgia visited South Carolina, and Georgia beat them 74-269. Is this the year that Mike White's Georgia Bulldogs finally get over the hump? They are looking the part right now. Won the game 74-69. Big win for the Bulldogs. In a mid-major game, we just have to mention, out of the SOCON, it was Samford. Samford, not Stanford. Samford visited Western Carolina. Both teams came into the game 15-2, and and Samford won 75-271. Samford started off their year with a 50-point loss against Purdue, and then they lost against BCU, second game of the year, by 10. And now they are 16-0 and in their last 16 games. This team has some offensive firepower. They are rolling right now. Good win for the Samford team. They may be the SoCon champions. Let's move on to Wednesday out of the Big East. The biggest game of the night was number 19, Creighton, visiting number one, UConn, as their first game as the number one team in the nation. UConn handled them easily, 62-48. to 
Creighton could not get anything going offensively. UConn just looked like the better team in this game. They looked like the better coach team. They looked like the better, just better team in general. They look like the part as the number one team in the nation. Good win there. Mississippi State visited number eight, Kentucky, and Kentucky handled their physicality quite easily, 92-77. Kentucky rebounds after that loss against A&M. Another ranked-on-ranked matchup was number 25, Texas Tech, visited number five, Houston, where Houston took care of business, 77-54, rebounded after those back-to-back losses. Just shows never bet against a Big 12 team at home. Nevada visited San Diego State in a very interesting uh, Mountain West uh, contest here where San Diego State won 71 to 59. Both teams are currently in our bracketology, which we will get to here soon. Number 22 Ole Miss, Chris Beard's squad visited LSU and got beat on the road 89 to 80. Ole Miss now 2-2 two and two in their last four games after that undefeated start for a while. Florida State visited Miami, a Miami team that desperately needed a win. They looked like they should have got it at home. They were favored by 7.5, yet they got beat 84-75. to This Miami team is trending downward. They are starting to spiral out of control. Florida State, only one loss in the ACC. Leonard Hamilton's squad getting better. Jim Laranega's squad at Miami is getting worse. UCF visited Texas, a Texas team that has struggled so mightily. And UCF beat them at Texas. Horrible, horrible game for Texas. You cannot lose games like this. They got beat 77-71. May have been a trap game. For those who don't know what a trap game is, it's a just a mediocre matchup before a big game that Texas plays. Texas plays Baylor tomorrow. This game against UCF might have looked past it, especially being at home at Texas. But you can't lose games like this. It hurts their resume so much. That's it for Wednesday. On Thursday, just one game worth noting. USF visited number 10 Memphis and beat them 74-73. They were down 20 in the second half. It was 52 to 32, I think. Then they went on a 42 to 21 run. Unbelievable. USF Memphis the computers don't like them that much. Their record likes them. They have some higher quadrant wins. Yet this has kind of been been foreshadowed with their last couple games. Snuck out that game against UTSA at home in overtime. UTSA is not good. Won some close games, and every win they have is started, starting to look a little worse. They beat Virginia, Clemson, both teams really struggling. Even AM. Ugh, tough loss for Penny Hardaway's squad. That's it for the games of the week. Let's move into our bracketology that we just updated. We'll just go through this real quickly. We're not going to go through the whole thing. Our one seeds, it, it, it did not change for the top two seeds. Number one overall seed is still Purdue. Number two overall seed, the second one seed is Houston. Third is UConn. And the fourth number one seed is Kansas moving up to that number one line. Kansas barely edging out North Carolina for that last number one seed. Carolina, Arizona, Tennessee, and Wisconsin are the two are the four two seeds, excuse me. Let's just talk a little bit about our bubble watch. Let's talk about our last four buys. Our last four buys include Wake Forest as a 10 seed, Ole Miss as an 11 seed, Texas A&M also as an 11 seed, and Kansas State is our last team in as a 12 seed. Our first four games, we have Ohio State taking on Providence in the 11 spot, and Northwestern taking on Boise State in the 12 spot. First four out, the first team out they were actually in until they got beat by Colorado the other night is Oregon. Oregon is our first team out, then Nebraska, then North Carolina State, and then that Colorado team that beat Oregon. Our next four out includes South Carolina, Florida, Virginia, and Gonzaga. Now enough about bracketology. Let's get into our Sweet 16 games to watch this weekend. Most of them coming on Saturday, starting with number nine, Baylor, visiting Texas. This game's at 12 o'clock on Saturday on ESPN. Baylor favored by two at Ken Palm. Give me the Bears, minus two. I think Texas is just, quite frankly, not very good, and they are trending downward. It'll be a tough environment. I say never bet against the Big 12 team on the road, yet I am going to take Baylor in this game. Also at 12 o'clock, number 17, Marquette is favored by one over Rick Pitino's St. John's. Keep 
keep up to date whether Rick Patino will be coaching or not. This obviously makes a big difference for St. John's. This game is on Fox. That'll depend what the uh, where I'll be picking this game. I think if Rick Patino is coaching, I would lean more towards St. John's. If not, I would probably lean more towards Marquette. So I think that is the difference maker. Also at 12 o'clock, also out of the Big East, number 18, Creighton visits Seton Hall on Fox Sports 1. Creighton is favored by two via Ken Palm. Give me Seton Hall at home without a doubt. I, From what I saw in this Creighton team against UConn, they did not look very good. This may be a redemption game, but Seton Hall and Kadari Richmond have looked great. Give me Seton Hall, money line in this game. At 1 o'clock in the Big 12, number 15, Oklahoma visits Cincinnati. Cincinnati favored by three. This game's on ESPN+. Plus. Cincinnati just plays a bunch of close games. Three points you think would be barely any, but it's close. I will take Oklahoma plus the three in this one. At 1 o'clock, a big Mountain West game. San Diego State visits Boise State. This game is on CBS. San Diego State favored by one. I think I'll take San Diego State on the road in this one. Boise State just got beat at home the other day. Give me San Diego State. At 2 o'clock, number 2, Purdue visits Iowa. This game is on Fox Sports 1. Purdue is favored by 7 via Kempom. This is a sneaky game right here. I could see Iowa has been, believe it or not, playing great. They always have that firepower on offense. I'm not sure they'll be able to contain Zach Eady and Purdue. They have been rolling, especially that game against Indiana. I will still take Purdue minus the 7. At 2 o'clock, the SEC, this may be the game of the day. Alabama visits number 6, Tennessee. Tennessee favored by 4. This game is on ESPN2. Alabama is currently 5th in the net. Tennessee is 6th. Both teams are looking to win an SEC title. Minus 4 doesn't seem like enough. These are actually very similar teams on the offensive end. But Tennessee plays defense better than Alabama. I will take Tennessee to cover this, especially at home. At 2 o'clock, another ranked-on-ranked matchup, and where else would it be other than the Big 12? Number 24, Iowa State visits number 19, TCU. TCU favored by one. This game is on ESPNU. Give me TCU minus one strictly because they are at home. At 4 o'clock, Clemson visits Florida State on the ACC Network. Clemson favored by one via Ken Palm. This was an interesting matchup that I just had to throw in here. Clemson spiraling downwards. Florida State spiraling upwards. I think I'm taking Florida State. I'm finally going to fade Clemson. I was so big on them. Give me Florida State money line in this game. At 6 o'clock, Georgia visits number 8, Kentucky. Kentucky favored by 10 at Ken Palm. This game is on the SEC Network. Georgia, Mike White's squad, as we said, does, does is this the year that he turns the page and, and finally makes the NCAA tournament with a good team? I don't think they win in this game, especially being at Kentucky. Kentucky's so good at home, other than against teams other against teams not named UNC Wilmington, excuse me there. I think Kentucky wins this game by 15 plus without a doubt. At six o'clock, another ranked on ranked matchup out of the Big 12. Number 20, BYU visits number 25, Texas Tech. BYU favored by two. This game is on ESPN two. Ooh, sneaky game here. This will be a good matchup. I think you just got to take Texas Tech plus the two because it is at home. At 6 o'clock, out of the CAA mid-major matchup, Charleston visits UNC Wilmington. Speaking of UNC Wilmington, UNC Wilmington favored by three. This game's on CBS Sports Network. Charleston just lost a trap game the other day. I think it was to Towson. I, I like Charleston to win the conference. UNC Wilmington at home. This is This will be a 50-50 game. I think I'll take UNC Wilmington minus the three just being at home. At 8 o'clock out of the Big East, number one, UConn visits Villanova. This game is on Fox Sports 1. UConn favored by two via Ken Palm. Something to note for this game, this game is at Wells Fargo. It is not at Villanova University. It's at Wells Fargo where the uh, where the Sixers play. With that being said, I will take number one, UConn, to cover this two points without a doubt. Kind of seems like a lock if you ask me. I bet the line will be more like four and a half, five and a half. At 8.30, number 22 Ole Miss is expected to fall out of the ranks after this week. They visit number 13 Auburn. Auburn favored by 14 via Ken Palm. This game is on the SEC Network. Ooh, sneaky line there. I think Ole Miss rebounds. I don't think they lose by more than 14. I'll take 14. That's what I said against Tennessee, and Tennessee beat them by almost 30. Give me Ole Miss plus the 14. I have faith in Chris Beard. At 10 o'clock, St. Mary's visits San Francisco in the WCC. San Francisco favored by one. 
This game is on CBS Sports Network. It will be either St. Mary's, San Francisco, or Gonzaga representing them, representing the WCC in March Madness this year. I fully expect it. These two teams are at the top right now. It is not Gonzaga, so something to pay attention to. I'll take St. Mary's to win this game. I haven't seen enough of San Francisco, so maybe don't trust me on this one. I just I, I think St. Mary's has been playing well as of late. St. Mary's is one of those teams where they either lose or they win a game by 30. So keep an eye on this game. In our final game, we are going to move on to Sunday at noon. It is Michigan State visiting Maryland. This game is on CBS. Both teams were projected so good in the preseason, and both teams, quite frankly, have kind of disappointed. Both teams are starting to come back, though. Michigan State's favored by three at Maryland. Whew. This is a 50-50 one as well. I think I will take Michigan State minus the three, though, to beat Maryland. I think Tom Izzo's squad is rolling. That is it for our Sweet 16 of the week. There are a lot of good games tomorrow. Be sure to check them out across all platforms. Other news around the NCAA, just real quick. It seems Terrence Shannon's restraining order has been granted against Illinois. Not a lot of details out on it yet, but what everyone is saying on uh, social media is that it, it allows him to be able to play right away. Now, I doubt that Illinois would play him. I sure know I wouldn't right away. I mean, how can a team without much details, much known details, play for this guy who was committed of or was charged of rape? Who knows? I'm, I'm not going to get real deep into it. It's just something to keep your eye on. If Terrence Shannon will be back, if this, what this means for, for the justice system, I, I quite frankly have no idea. It just came out, so we'll see how that leads. All right, that is it for our show. Be sure to check out our most recent podcast. This is a podcast in back-to-back days. We posted one yesterday where it's just our mid-season podcast where uh, we talk about some of the best teams, some of the, some of the worst teams, some of the disappointing teams, some of the mid-major teams to look out for in March. It recaps everything throughout the year. We put our uh, All-American team on there as of right now. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Our Instagram and Twitter is at Bracket Science with two S's. Our Facebook is Bracket Science, two words. We also post everything on our blog, bracketscience.weebly.com. Be sure to check that out. We're going to post our Bracketology right after we're done filming this, so be sure to check that out for the full list and see where your team stands. Hopefully you guys enjoy these quickie pods. Let me know. Be sure to give us a like and subscribe on YouTube or whether you're listening to it on podcast. We appreciate it. Comment your feelings. We love to hear every single one of your comments. Everyone have a great rest of their night. Have a great Saturday. Enjoy the college basketball games. Be safe in all the snow. Take care.